Hey everybody, welcome back. Happy New Year to everybody who celebrates it. It is January 1st when I'm recording this. I just can't stop doing this stuff. I'm having so much fun. This is the the GTEC A10M that you're looking at that I just reviewed. And I've made an interesting little modification to this and I thought I'd share it with you in my settings. And this isn't anything that I, I have created or designed. This information has been around for, I mean, I think it was January last year that this information was first released. But in order to get rid of the purge blocks, which some kind, sometimes can use two to three times as much filament as the actual part you're printing, we have a purge bucket. And what that does is instead of building the block up out of unneeded filament, just so it will be at the right height when you need it to purge, this bucket mounts to the, to the x-axis and as you can see, it goes up and down with the z-axis, so it's always at the right height. And what happens is when we need to change filament colors, the head moves over, it purges out the amount that it needs to into the bucket, and then it simply goes back over and starts printing. This is something, and I'm going to take you over to the computer and I'm going to show you this and my change settings for it, but before I do, you can see that I have a, this particular bucket is open on the side and it's sloped in here so the filament just kind of rolls down and I have put this little box I am made for something else. I had originally made this, where's the other half of it? I had originally made this for, um, as a test piece and it's just been sitting on my desk ever since to show somebody who wanted me to design something for them, just kind of a proof of concept. And I've just been using the bottom to catch the chunks of filament. But one of the changes that I made to this was instead of a piece of rubber or silicone in here, because I tried that and I wasn't getting quite the results I was hoping for, I took a penny, a U.S. copper penny, and then I took one of these and I chopped the top third of it off. And then I heated it up with one of these, and I didn't think of this. I saw this someplace, and I will tell you who I saw that did it and where I saw it from, but honestly, I just can't remember. So if you're out there and you're seeing this, chime in and I will give you credit because I don't mean to swipe anybody's ideas. But anyway, I then sunk, see if I can get up close, that little channel that's provided to put the silicone in, I pushed the hot penny into it, and I got it at just the right level, and it's nice and sharp so that when the head passes over it, when the nozzle passes over it, it cuts off that string of filament very cleanly and leaves it in the purge bucket. So, with that being said, let's hop over to my computer and I will show you the origins of this thing, or what I think are the origins of it, and some of the changes I've made, and how it worked when I got it, and how it's working for me now. Okay, so this is 3D Maker Noob's YouTube channel. If you don't watch it, you should. It's very good. This is where I was first exposed to the idea of a purge bucket. This is back from January 17th, 2019. A couple of the printers he had came with purge buckets, and he liked the idea so much when he got the GTEC A20M, he wanted to add a purge bucket to it. So he designed this part over here at Thingiverse. And it's a square bucket that mounts around the x-axis stepper motor and it has a, a drawer that slides out of the bottom not a drawer but a bottom plate that slides out so you can dump the filament out and he provides the g code for simplify 3d to make it work two problems with that first i don't have an a20m while the a10 is similar it is enough different and um, i don't have simplify 3d either so i looked around a little bit more and i found cmhnav's purge bucket for the a20 the a10m and his isn't really a bucket it's more of a slide that lets it it gives a spot to mount something to cleanly cut the filament off as it moves out and it gives a slide that slides the purged filament down and out to one side he uses some foil tape here to make sure it misses this lower aluminum extrusion and doesn't pile up on it. But more importantly, what he did, and more importantly in my mind anyway, <clears throat> what he did was he took 3D Maker Noob's G-code for Simplify 3D and then adapted it for Cura. And you can see here what he does. Um, 
moves x not x nine point minus nine point five moves it over into the bucket. He extrudes fifty millimeters into the bucket. He resets it back the extruder back to zero, and he continues on with the print. So that didn't quite work really well for me, and it could be because it's a newer version of Cura that I'm using than he did. And his is from February 2nd of 2019, last year now. And, um, or it could be because we have different numbers typed in for our machine settings for the A10M and Cura. So anyway, but it worked well enough that it gave me the idea of what he was trying to accomplish, and, um, and kind of pointed me in a direction of why it wasn't working for me. First, 9.5 wasn't enough to move it over into the bucket for me. I just had to increase that number for 15, and that moved it into the bucket. Also, I, I decreased 50 millimeters of purge to 25 because I am trying to keep the, the waste and down to minimum and keep the speed of the print up. And this does speed the print up way from a, a purge block. So here's what I got when I after I after I got it purging into the bucket. Here's what I got, and um, where do I have it here? Here we go here. And the problem was while it was purging into the bucket, and you can see the bucket is actually off the edge of the bed, so you can see that this here is on the bed. So what was happening was as the nozzle would move after the purge, as the nozzle would move outside the bucket, it would pause momentarily ooze some more out and then move back down into the printing move back down near the bed and then continue on it moved just close enough to the bed for that oozing to stick to the bed and then it would string it over and then each successful layer would stick the ooze to the bed and move it over and i'd get all this stringing which i wasn't that big of a deal to clean off but i absolutely didn't want and you can see the purge over here is actually most of it's actually going in the bucket that little that little thing isn't really big enough and i do need to put a little added material on it to miss that lower aluminum extrusion on the bottom printer rail so i had two problems one it was pausing and two it's oozing filament out now let's whoops let's pop over to cura and let's take a look at it and let's see what I did. Let me shut that off because you don't need to see that yet. So first off, the pause. As I looked at the printer's LCD panel, I could see that it would be go to e E0 or E1 heating during that pause. And since all my print temperatures are set to identical, they're all set to 210, it shouldn't need to be heating. So I started fooling around with the temperatures. Now, one thing you have to remember is as of right now, as of Cura 4.1.1, there is no setting in Cura for shared heater on a mixed printer. So you have to be careful to duplicate your settings in both Extruder 1 and Extruder 2. So I first, I, I changed final printing temperature from 210 to 211 because somebody said that would fix it. And it changed it, but it didn't really stop it. So I came down here to standby temperature, and I bumped the standby temperature up to 211, one degree hotter than my normal print temperature, and that completely got rid of that one second pause. So one thing, the guy at Thingiverse, he says to change the nozzle switch for traction distance from 16 to 0. Now, I did that, and I thought, well, maybe if I come back, and he says to do that, because if you don't, your parts will be blobby. So... I, um, I tried upping this, and it didn't cure the problem, and I could see it was going to start making things a little blobby, so I put it back to zero. So next I came into his, um, I came into, not his, I came into the um, printer settings, and manage printers, and GTEC ATMN PB, PB is for purge bucket, and I came into machine settings, and let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it better. And... Um, I changed, and the the G code, the start and end G code under the printer tab, you can leave that alone. You don't need to change that. It's this extruder 1 and extruder 2 where we pasted the G code he gave us in. Now, in his, right underneath the, you can see here this G92, he, he, G92E0, he resets the extrusion distance. So then he does the extrusion, which I changed to 25. And then these next two lines I added after, after 
as, as you got it from him, hit come down to this M211 S1, then reset the extruder to zero again, increase the feed rate, and then it would go back to printing. So what I did was I added another G92E0 after the, after the purge, and I did it for a reason I'll tell you momentarily. Then after the reset, I, retra I did a 3 millimeter retraction, E-3. And then those last three lines are, are his original lines again. And the reason I added that E0 back here is because I wanted to be able to change these two independently. So instead of just leaving that out and coming to this retraction and making it this plus 3, um, this minus 3, I guess, or plus 3, I don't know, I can't remember. <laughs> I, I, I made them separate so I could fool with them independently, and that's why I did that. So... After I did that, this was the result I got. So as you can see, while it still isn't 100% perfect, I did get rid of all that stringing back and forth. It occasionally does drag some blobs from the purge over back to the part, and they sometimes stick to it, sometimes stick to the nozzle. Fortunately, they are, you know, mostly, com mostly if not completely cooled, and they will brush right off and, and don't really seem to stick to anything. Here is what I got in the little purge collector. That is way less than what I would have had in a purge block. And the print is way faster than what I would have gotten with a um, purge block as well. And the print quality is, um, I don't think I detracted from the print quality. Not 100% happy with the print quality yet, but it w at least with these true dual color prints like this where I have a purge block or a purge bucket. But um, I'm getting back to it. And I, I think a little bit more work and I will have it exactly where I want it to be. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed these videos, please like and subscribe and hit notifications. If you have a better way of doing this, if you have one of these printers or something like this, please leave me the info in the comment section below. If you're in the market for a printer like this, let me know what you're looking at. If you don't like this printer, let me know why. I'd like to hear it. Anyway, we're going to come back and we're going to do some more work with this printer in the near future. But until then, oh, and all the links to everything, I will put those below as well. And I'm um, including my, my um, adjusted code. And yeah, thanks for stopping by and watching. And I will catch you guys the next time. Bye for now.